Tonight is the third Sunday of the month, and we will be taking steps 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This is Mike, alcoholic. Welcome to Beginner's Big Book Alcoholics Anonymous group. We are recreating the beginner's classes from the early 1940s and 50s when the sobriety rate was an average of 75%. In Cleveland, it was as high as 93%. We take the 12 steps every month. On the first Sunday of the month, we take steps 1 and 2. Second Sunday, steps 3, 4, and 5. Third Sunday, 6 through 10. And on the fourth Sunday, we take steps 11 and 12. We take the 12 steps at the group level as an overview. For those who want to take the 12 steps on a one-to-one -one basis, please connect with a sharing partner. A sharing partner is a person who has taken all 12 steps, recovered from alcoholism, has had a spiritual awakening, and is willing to work with the newcomer. Will the sharing partners who want to work with others please raise your hand? Thank you. For the people that want to take the 12 steps, please connect with a sharing partner after the meeting ends. We have big books for sale at group cost of $8. Each page and paragraph is numbered. Please do not write in a book. This is the AA preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength, and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization, or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics achieve sobriety. Here's a quote from our co-founder Bill Wilson, written in the 1958 A Grapevine. Sobriety, freedom from alcohol, through the teaching and practice of the 12 steps, is the sole purpose of an AA group. End quote. For those who want their paper signed, please hang on to them till after the meeting is over. We will sign them after the meeting is over, after we had said the Lord's Prayer. Sometimes this meeting goes over one hour. If you have to leave it at 7.30, do not expect to have your court paper signed. Or if you have to leave before 7.30, Again, do not expect to have your court papers signed. We sign the papers after the meeting is over, after we had said the Lord's Prayer. This is done as a courtesy. It's not mandatory that we sign your paper. Please silence your cell phones. Please no texting during the meeting or talking. Let's take a moment of silence to invite the God of our own understanding into our hearts and remind ourselves why we are here tonight, followed by the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. We'll be passing the basket now for the seventh tradition. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. Thank you. For those who can get on the Internet, we do have resources online for these workshops. We have a MP3 format, file format, and PDFs for the handouts. 
They are posted on the website spiritualsteps.com. Again, spiritualsteps.com. We have the workshop for Paul Fisher, Brian and Catherine, and Ken B. And again, spiritualsteps.com. For those who want to go to YouTube, we have a YouTube site dedicated to Alcoholics Anonymous. Simply Google AA10001 and that will take you directly to the YouTube channel where currently there's over 19,000 subscribers and over 370 videos. A to Z pertaining to Alcoholics Anonymous and recovery from alcoholism. And again, that YouTube channel, simply Google AA10011 and it will take you directly to that YouTube channel. Thank you. Before we start the steps tonight, we have a 20-minute talk briefly describing the back-to-basic format as it was done back in the 1940s. Our special guest today, I am really honored that he is able and willing to join us. Wally P. is the author of Back to Basics, the Alcoholics Anonymous Beginners Meetings, and also... How to Listen to God, Overcoming Addiction Through the Practice of Two-Way Prayer. Wally P. is the originator of the Back to Basics Beginners Meetings, which have grown to thousands of groups across the country and in other countries as well. Wally P. has himself taken over 10,000 people through the 12 steps. Wally himself, and has witnessed countless miracles of recovery. Wally P., welcome and thank you for joining us on the Dr. Carroll Program today. Thank you, Dr. Carroll. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to join you and uh, your listeners. I want to say, first of all, that I, with you, am grateful that God has brought you health. I know you had some health challenges. You're doing well. You're traveling again. And I'm really excited about that for you and also for the people that you're able to share this, this good news with. Um, Wally, I know many people, and I'm sure many of our listeners, have heard about the 12-step programs, and many people have, have found a lot of benefits there, but there have also been some that have found that maybe the way they've experienced the 12 steps hasn't been completely successful. What do you think are some of the uh, things about the way the 12-step programs are usually practiced that, well, may not really be as helpful as they should be? Well, in the early days of the uh, 12-step movement, uh, the steps uh, weren't an option. They were a necessity. Uh, this is what a newcomer did. In fact, in many uh, areas of the country, you could not go to a regular meeting until you had actually completed all 12 steps. And uh, back then, they handed out uh, what was called a sobriety card, and uh, it had two dates on it, the date that uh, you entered the 12-step community and the date you finished the steps, and, and typically that was done within a matter of a few weeks. Today we have um, two schools, um, and, uh, and one is the fellowship of recovery, and the other is the program of recovery. And in terms of the fellowship, uh, many people here don't drink and go to meetings, 90 meetings in 90 days, and uh, things like that, uh, which are actually contrary to uh, what was actually practiced in the early days, which was, oh, and another one was meeting makers make it. Well, in the early days, uh, it wasn't meeting makers who made it. It was step takers who make it. And, and that's what we're seeing is that people that are uh, getting reconnected with the steps, uh, getting reconnected with the original program are, are seeing the same success that they saw back in the 1940s and 1950s. And I'm, I've just been blessed to uh, be a part of this movement. Uh, just wanted to 
uh, say as an aside that I make no money from the sale of any book uh, or literature that has my name on it. Uh, this is my 12-step work for which I cannot be paid. This is my gift to the recovery community, and what an honor it is to be able to give this away. Oh, thank you, Wally, for saying that and for sharing with us today. I want to let our listeners know that we have some links on our website, some articles that you have made available, and also links to the Back to Basics book that, that you have authored. Wally, talk about some of the parts of or what's different about the Back to Basics approach to the 12 steps that you have found has made the difference for people. I don't think it's a question of difference. It's a question of of reconnecting with what worked, uh, what uh, Bill W. and Dr. Bob and the pioneers put together uh, as a very simple and straightforward approach uh, to the steps. Uh, The big book was written uh, with the assumption that the steps would be taken in a matter of a few hours, and uh, and that's the way it was practiced in the early days. Uh, I am... Uh, again, blessed to thank you for commenting with good health, and I'm back on the road uh, uh, taking people through the steps. Uh, I, I do it um, uh, on weekends uh, during a, uh, a day. We start at 9 o'clock in the morning on step one, and by 4.30 in the afternoon we've taken all 12 steps, including uh, a fifth step. We have a two-hour lunch break for take the fifth step, and then other groups are doing um, – a one-week version where you take uh, session one on Monday, session two on Tuesday, you do a fifth step on Wednesday, uh, session three on Thursday, and session four on Friday. And there's uh, over 6,000 groups now uh, each meeting each week uh, which are taking the steps in four one-hour sessions over the course of a month, uh, such as every Wednesday night. Uh, last Monday I was in Lake Oswego, Oregon, and that was I was at their Beginners meeting uh, Wednesday. I was at the beginners meeting in Anacortes, Washington. Uh, next Wednesday, I'm going to be at the beginners meeting or one of the several beginners meetings in Vancouver, British Columbia. And then Thursday, uh, we're going over to Vancouver Island and and see the beginners witness the beginners meetings there. Wow, that that is awesome. Now, Wally, you talk about taking people through these steps in a matter of hours or at most a, a few weeks. That seems so revolutionary to people that may have been in re- recovery programs or 12-step programs for years and, oh, maybe now I'm on step five or working on step seven. It, it's, it's a very different approach. What, is there any benefit to doing the 12 steps repeatedly? I, I can imagine if you do it all in, in a day or, or in a few weeks, there may still be other things that you have to, to learn to grow into. Um, I'm, let me give you a quote from Bill W., co-founder of the first of the 12-step programs, and uh, and he made this statement in 1951, speaking from the podium in Hollywood, California. And this is a quote: "Don't make a project out of working the steps. Go through your day being the sort of person you'd like to be, trying to help someone else, and making sure you don't hurt anyone." And when you get to the end of your day, review the 12 steps, and you'll find that you have worked all of them. So the co-founder of the first of the 12-step programs was giving us the uh, statement uh, that uh, we're to take all 12 steps each and every day. And uh, and I do that. I, I do a surrender uh, each morning. I share with others throughout the day. I make amends quickly if I've harmed anyone. I forgive uh, people who may have harmed me. And uh, I, again, as part of my morning uh, quiet time, I listen to the indwelling spirit, and I write guidance, and I follow it to the best of my ability during the day and review it at night. And try to help somebody else, uh, at least at least one or two uh, each and every day. Um, and uh, when people would ask in the early days, "What step are you on?" Uh, the answer was all of them. I think that is a very I, wonderful approach. This becomes a way that you live every day. And as that that quote that you read, not getting bogged down at, at any one particular point. Well, you mentioned something that I want. to to hopefully have you elaborate on a little bit, and that's, you mentioned surrender. I know that is a word that's regularly talked about. Another word is powerless in the, in the first three steps. 
Um, I know also that some people I have been aware of who are in 12 step programs or, or trying to overcome an addiction will say, Oh, I'm just praying and asking God to take care of this for me. Talk about how relying on God or surrender to God and, and that thought. Uh, how do you connect that with the need to take action and, and do something on your part? How, how do you work all that out? Well, the surrender is, is essential. Uh, and that is really the, the heart and soul of the uh, beginning of the journey or the beginning of each day is to acknowledge that we can't do this alone. Uh, this is a we program. Uh, we read the big book together, we take the steps together, and we recover together. So part of that we program includes the God of our understanding. Um, some people call it uh, spirit or the indwelling spirit. Uh, many, many different names uh, for this power. Greater than human power that resides inside each and every one of us. So that's the key is that it is an inner journey. It's a journey uh, to determine uh, which course to take each and every day by, by listening and, and receiving uh, guidance. And we typically take action on guidance that passes uh, the test of forgiveness and, and faith or love and uh, unselfishness and honesty. And, uh, and, and hopefully we don't take action on anything that we receive that um, has to do with resentment or fear or selfishness or dishonesty. So we have a test to separate um, what the pioneers called uh, self-will from God's will. And... I use a little 2012 version of it uh, when I'm taking people through the work, especially in large groups. Uh, I talk about the voice of addiction versus the voice of recovery, and can you tell the difference between the two voices? Well, the pioneers gave us a test to separate those two voices, and uh, and hopefully uh, we're able to learn from this. Uh, that's why we have sharing partners, because we may think it passes the test, and uh, our sharing partners or sponsors or spiritual guides uh, uh, may think otherwise, and, and it's a topic that we open up for discussion. We do have a caller, Wally. Would you be oh. Would you be willing to to talk to one of our callers for a moment? Oh, absolutely. I had a question for you, Wally. It all sounds, uh, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you're going back to the sort of back to the basics, right? Or back to the the, the founders intense for the program, and uh, I, I agree that a lot of things have happened over the years. What particularly interests me is the fact that you have been discussing going through the steps in such rapid fashion. I agree that can sometimes drag on unnecessarily and people hem and haw. But my uh, question re revolves around the action steps, four, five, eight, and nine, and how you achieve that or you know, how do you do those in such a quick manner and do them thoroughly enough that, that they're so critical to do completely? And I'm sure you understand what I mean. How do you address that so quickly? Oh, excellent question, Jason. Um, let me talk about the uh, that uh, particular part of the program in terms of a concept that's relatively new. It's not a concept uh, uh, from the uh, 40s or 50s, but one that I particularly uh, enjoy in terms of visualization is that uh, uh, we peel the onion. That's why we take the steps again and again and again and again. And the and the key is to uh, get through uh, that process in one sitting. Uh, the sponsor and the newcomer sit down together and the sponsor asks the questions and the newcomer does the talking and the sponsor uh, actually writes the four-step. I know this, this sounds like heresy to some people today, but <laughs> this is the way it was done. And uh, as an archivist historian for the 12-step community and, and having had open access to every archival collection in the United States and Canada and interviewing more than 200, 300 people uh, that got sober in the 1940s. I am passing on their message and not mine. Um, 
that it was done in one sitting, and then uh, you talk about it, and then you come up with an amends list, and then you role play the amends. And uh, and part of the amends was uh, the concept that the uh, sponsor was the first person the newcomer saw after an amends was made, uh, either in person or over the telephone. And uh, um, but the whole uh, process of doing this in one sitting is part of the uh, way of looking at the steps as a continuum rather than as twelve distinct. And, and separate entities, uh, a continuum Wally, of process. Wally, I'm, I'm sorry we are running a little close to our break. Are you able to perhaps hold on for a few minutes? I love this discussion, and if you're able, Certainly. maybe we could just have you hold on for a few minutes after our break? I would be honored. Our very special guest today, Wally P., is the author of Back to Basics, the Alcoholics Anonymous Beginners Meetings, and also... How to Listen to God, Overcoming Addiction Through the Practice of Two-Way Prayer. Wally has taken over 10,000 people through the 12 steps of recovery over very short periods of time. And we've been talking with Wally about the Back to Basics approach. And Jason, calling while uh, driving his truck through Kentucky, was asking Wally about the action steps, uh, the four particular action steps in the 12-step programs. And taking those very, very quickly. And I, I think, Wally, you gave a very good very good synopsis of answering that. You need to at least get a certain level through those action steps quickly, even though you may have to come back and do more later. A- a- am I right there? Oh, yes. And let me clarify uh, for Jason and the uh, rest of the listeners that um, back to basics, uh, we describe it, in terms of the tourniquet, and uh, I found it ironic that today is the, uh, uh, on this date, the Band-Aid was invented. Uh, that's another <laughs> way of looking at, uh, at these beginners meetings uh, and, the, and the back to basics approach. And the example would be uh, a hospital. If you go to the hospital and, you're, and you have a knife wound uh, and you're ble- bleeding profusely, uh, the doctor doesn't hand you a book and send you home and tell you to read it. He puts on, he or she puts on the tourniquet and then moves on to the next emergency patient. And then another person will come along and, and, uh, suture up the wound and, and possibly a third person come along and, and put on uh, the bandage and uh, give you a shot of antibiotics and send you home. Back to basics is just the tourniquet. This is just to keep you alive long enough so that you can take the steps in more depth and detail again and again and again and again and get deeper into those layers of the onion. If you don't put the tourniquet on, you're not going to be alive long enough to take the steps in more depth and detail. Does that help, Jason? Yes, that's a great answer. Thank you, Ollie. Um, as you said, there's there's a whole lot. I've heard that expression myself in the rooms a number of times, of course, and it's a very good uh analogy for the process of, of undoing uh, so many years of, uh, of having lived with this illness and all the destructive events that have happened in your life. So uh, that's um, I appreciate the time today. Thank you for having me on, and uh, it was great to talk to you both. And thank you, Wally. Wally, another question that I, I hope you can address. In your book, How to Hear from God, the, the Two-Way Prayer, and I know yeah. you've alluded to that a couple times just briefly share what that whole practice is about. Uh, this practice uh, has been around for centuries and centuries. It, it's not unique to uh, the 12-step community, um, though our 11th step makes it crystal clear as to what we are to do in terms of action. It says, uh, sought through prayer and meditation. Prayer is talking to God, talking to the indwelling spirit, uh, typically in prayer, uh, but the second half of it is listening for the answers. It's um, it, it's a two-way communication because uh, as a result of becoming a listener, and that's what many of the pioneers considered the steps all about, steps one through ten were to remove the blocks that prevent us from becoming effective listeners. Step 11 teaches us how to listen. In step 12, we let God do the talking as we work with others. So it, it is about listening, and it is about being guided in terms of messages that we receive, either through sight or sound or sensation 
or uh, a knowing. Those are the four channels that uh, that Bill described on page 14 of the big book, uh, sight, sound, sensation, and knowing. And then further on in the big book, it talks about an, uh, inspiration, intuitive thought, or a decision is how, how the spirit will uh talk to us through inspiration, intuitive thought, or a decision. And we have to be careful with the decisions because it could be a, a yes or no, but keep in mind that weight is a decision, and uh, and be careful right. with the fourth one. If you insist, uh, if you insist on taking your will back, uh, guess what? We get it back, and then we're off to the races, and uh, uh, usually with very negative consequences. So uh, it's a it's a powerful tool. Uh, there are 11 step guidance meetings that have sprung up all over the country and around the world where people actually use this as a meeting format. Uh, it was a meeting format in the early days of the recovery movement. Uh, started in Dr. Bob's living room in the summer of 1935. Bill and Bob both practiced it on a daily basis. Um, and it, uh, again, uh, has become a lost piece of our history that's now being uh, rediscovered and uh, and reemphasized. I want to let our listeners know that you have made some articles available that we have put links to on our website. I was really touched by one of them. You had a large number of quotes from people who have experienced the, the Back to Basics beginners meetings, some who were beginners, but some who continue to include that approach in their in their daily life of of, of living healthy and, and recovery I, I have to say I was I was rather touched by by some of those letters and and, and stories of people who have really uh, really found healing and, and recovery in this approach and I I imagine you hear that a lot Wally oh I, I am so blessed dr. Carroll um, to uh receive uh, all of this very, very positive feedback, uh, and not just from the people that I've taken through the steps personally, but the thousands of people that are conducting the meetings, and, and the more than 500,000 people that have been through the work, uh, and uh, also uh, how the work has been incorporated into other 12-step programs uh, other than the original uh, um, basic recovery for food addiction and basic recovery for sex addiction. And the General Service Office in New York has asked us to reserve back to basics uh, for the first of the 12-step programs having to do with alcohol. It is uh, equally applicable to other addictions and other obsessive compulsive behaviors. And uh, and I, I received the emails. I received the telephone calls. I just got a phone call earlier this week from a man who was returning to Russia. He uh, he started Back to Basics in St. Petersburg and had Back to Basics translated into Russian, and then he took it to Moscow, uh, came back to the United States uh, for a few months to basically unpack and repack, and, and now he's going back to Russia to plant more uh, beginners' meetings in, in other uh, cities in Russia. And the book has been translated into Chinese and Japanese. Polish and Norwegian, German and Spanish, and uh, all of this is done for fun and for free. Uh, uh, no money ever changes hands, and uh, I get to witness the miracles because uh, uh, somehow or other they uh, they find the the time and a and a phone number and give me a call. It's uh, just a, just an awesome to hear the, about their miracles. Well, Wally, I I, I want to say God bless you. Keep spreading the message. You know, you have really touched my heart, and and I know our listeners. I appreciate you taking some of your weekend time, from your spending some time with your family to be with us today. We're really pleased and honored. And go with God. Oh, you too. And uh, as uh, Dr. Bob and Bill used to say, uh, keep it simple and pass it on. Keep it simple and pass it on. Thank you, Wally, and we'll have to stay in touch. Thank bye bye you, Dr. now, Carol. This is Mike, alcoholic. Okay, tonight we're going to cover steps 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 
Let's go to page 59 and let's listen or read the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Here are the steps we took, which are suggested as a program of recovery. 1. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. 2. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. 3. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God, as we understood him. 4. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. 5. Admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. 6. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. 7. Humbly asked him to remove our shortcomings. 8. Made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. 9. Made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. 10. Continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. 11. Sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood Him, praying only for knowledge of His will for us and the power to carry that out. 12. Having had a spiritual awakening as the result of these steps, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Okay, let's start with step six. We're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Okay, let's pick up where we were at last week with step five. And let's go to page 75, paragraph three. Page 75, paragraph three. Returning home, we find a place where we can be quiet for an hour, carefully reviewing what we have done. We thank God from the bottom of our heart that we know Him better. Taking this book down from our shelf, we turn to the page which contains the twelve steps. Carefully reading the first five proposals, we ask if we have omitted anything, for we are building an arch through which we shall walk a free man at last. Is our work solid so far? Are the stones properly in place? Have we skimped on the cement put into the foundation? Have we tried to make mortar without sand? If we can answer to our satisfaction, we then look at step six. We have emphasized willingness as being indispensable. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us be willing. Okay, where it says, returning home, we consider the first five proposals. That is basically the first five steps. So we're going to do that. We're going to look at the first five steps and make sure that we're not missing something. Here are the steps we took, which are suggested as a program of recovery. 1. We admitted we were powerless over alcohol, 
that our lives have become unmanageable. 2. Came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. 3. Made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God as we understood Him. 4. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. 5. Admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. So in step one, we have a question. Do you concede to your innermost self that you're an alcoholic? Yes. In step two, we have a question. Do you believe or are you willing to believe in a power grade in yourself? Yes. In step three, we have a decision to turn our will and our life over to the care of God as we understand them. And we have a third step prayer to do that. In step four, we inventory resentments, fears, and sexual conduct and harms to others. And we share that with another human being and ourselves and God. At that point, we have our character defects. So in step six, we're praying for the willingness to have God take this out of our lives. We're praying for the willingness to have our character defects removed. We're praying to have selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear, and whatever else that was discovered in your fifth step. You can have the willingness to have God remove this. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one? If we still cling to something we will not let go, we ask God to help us be willing. We're going to take a moment to pray for the willingness if we still cling to something. So let's take a few moments to pray to the God of our understanding to have all these defects removed, have the willingness to have God take this out of our lives. Let's take a moment of silence and ask God of our understanding for the willingness Okay, thank you. Now we have a question for step six. For those who are ready to take, take step six, please stand. We have a question. Simply answer yes or no. Are we now ready to let God remove from us all the things which we have admitted are objectionable? Can he now take them all, every one?
Okay, thank you. Let's move on to step seven. Humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Let's go to page 76, paragraph 2, page 76, paragraph 2, and it starts with, when ready. When ready, we say something like this. My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. We have then completed Step 7. So in step seven, we have a prayer. We're asking God to remove our defects of character. When you have the defects of character or the liabilities of self-will, of selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear, whatever else that was discovered in your fifth step, please insert that into the prayer or ask God to have this removed from your life. So, we're again, where it says, every defect of character, please insert everything that you have found in your fifth step to have God take this out of your life. For example, in the seven-step prayer, it says, My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character of selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear, which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I'll go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. In other words, we are letting God know which particular defect of character we would like to have God take out of our lives. So again, Anything that you have come up in your fifth step, you can add that into where it says char character defects. In the prayer, you can add whatever you have found in your fifth step, and please please include that in your prayer. But for now, we're, we're going to go with what is written in the big book, and we're going to say the seven-step prayer at the group level. Okay, let's take the seventh step. Let's all stand and we'll say the seventh step prayer as it is written in the big book. My Creator, I am now willing that you should have all of me, good and bad. I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. Amen. Okay, thank you. Let's listen to step seven again. Humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Okay, when we ask God, that's a prayer. So in the seventh step, it says, humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Let's take a moment of silence and humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Some may be asking, what's the difference between a character defect and a shortcoming? And all I can say is, a shortcoming is like a flat tire. A character defect is like driving on it. Let's move on to step eight. Made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Let's go to page 76, paragraph 3. Page 76, paragraph 3. Now we need more action, without which we find that faith without works is dead. Let's look at steps 8 and 9. We have a list of all persons we have harmed, and to whom we are willing to make amends. We made it when we took inventory. So in step 8 we have two parts. One is the list, and the other part the second part is the willingness to make amends. As you just heard in the quote, we have the list from step four. We'll bring it forward for step eight. So that is satisfied part one of step eight. The second part is willingness. So again, we're going to take a moment of silence and pray for the willingness to make amends. Let's take a moment of silence to pray for the willingness to make amends. Okay, thank you. Let's move on to step nine. Made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. For step nine, we're going to clean up the wreckage of the past. Just as a reference, I don't have enough time to play all the quotes from the big book in this session. In step nine, it's covered in detail on what to do, when to do it, how to do it, on pages 76 to 84. I have a few quotes that I'll play right now, but keep in mind, clean house, trust God, help others. Here's a little one-minute clip from Wally's talk. And it's in reference to making amends. You talk about it, and then you come up with an amends list, and then you role play the amends. And uh, and part of the amends was uh, the concept that the uh, sponsor was the first person the newcomer saw after an amends was made, uh, either in person or over the telephone. And uh, um, but the whole uh, process of doing this in one sitting is part of. Uh, way of looking at the steps as a continuum rather than as 12 distinct and, and separate entities. Okay, let's go to page 79, paragraph 1. Page 79, paragraph 1. Although these reparations take innumerable forms, 
there are some general principles which we find guiding. Reminding ourselves that we have decided to go to any lengths to find a spiritual experience, we ask that we be given strength and direction to do the right thing, no matter what the personal consequences may be. We may lose our position or reputation or face jail, but we are willing. We have to be. We must not shrink at anything. We ask that we be given strength and direction to do the right thing. Okay, in that last quote, there was a prayer where it says, Ask that we give strength and direction to do the right thing. Let's take a moment of silence and ask the God of our understanding to give us strength and direction to do the right thing. Okay, thank you. Let's go to page 83, paragraph 1. Page 83, paragraph 1. Yes, there is a long period of reconstruction ahead. We must take the lead. A remorseful mumbling that we are sorry won't fill the bill at all. We ought to sit down with the family and frankly analyze the past as we now see it, being very careful not to criticize them. Their defects may be glaring, but the chances are that our own actions are partly responsible. So we clean house with the family asking each morning in meditation that our Creator show us the way of patience, tolerance, kindliness, and love. The spiritual life is not a theory. We have to live it. Let's go to page 83, paragraph 3. Page 83, paragraph 3. There may be some wrongs we can never fully right. We don't worry about them if we can honestly say to ourselves that we would right them if we could. Some people cannot be seen. We send them an honest letter. And there may be a valid reason for postponement in some cases. But we don't delay if it can be avoided. We should be sensible, tactful, considerate and humble, without being servile or scraping. As God's people, we stand on our feet. We don't crawl before anyone. Okay, I'm going to stop for, for step nine now. And just as a reminder, uh, the directions for making an amends, as found in the book Alcoholics Anonymous, is on pages 76 to 84. Okay, let's move on to step 10. Continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Let's go to page 84, paragraph 2. Page 84, 
paragraph 2. This thought brings us to step 10, which suggests we continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. We vigorously commenced this way of living as we cleaned up the past. We have entered the world of the Spirit. Our next function is to grow in understanding and effectiveness. This is not an overnight matter. It should continue for our lifetime. Continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. When these crop up, we ask God at once to remove them. We discuss them with someone immediately and make amends quickly if we have harmed anyone. Then we resolutely turn our thoughts to someone we can help. Love and tolerance of others is our code. Continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. When these crop up, we ask God at once to remove them. Okay, this is the uh, what's called the walking around step, or this is what I call spirituality versus religion. As soon as your eyes open up, <laughs> continue to watch for selfishness, dishonesty, resentment, and fear. And when these crop up, we ask God at once to remove them. So when it says when these crop up, that implies it's coming back. Our job is to watch for those things and ask God to take that out of our lives. It's a mini inventory, very similar, almost exactly as step four. It doesn't have the columns where you had... Column one, who are you angry? Column two, why are you angry? And column three, what does it affect? And then column four is, what should I have done instead? You can do that inventory to be thorough, but this is called a 10-step inventory, the directions. It's only a paragraph. This is something that will keep your nose clean. In reference to spirituality versus religion, this is 24-7, at least it is for me, where I was raised Catholic and I have nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with the Catholic religion, but I remember going to church on Sunday, two hours of Mass, the rest of the week I was in SOB. It was just something that didn't work out for me, only until I found AA did I have a God of my understanding that was personal to me. And I consider that spirituality. There is no middleman. It's so important. Do the daily inventory. And this will be the second inventory. The first one was in step four. This is the second inventory. In step 10, once we get into next week, we'll do step 11. There's also the evening review, which is another inventory. So this is what we do to stay sober. We can't afford to have anything build and fester because if we stay dishonest, resentful, selfish, and fearful too long, we will return to drinking because we're not spiritually fit. Continue to take personal inventory, and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. This thought brings us to step 10, which suggests we continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. Okay. We have a question for step 10. It's a simple yes or no. 
if you look on page 84, paragraph 2, it starts with the second line down. It starts with, we continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. So I'll, I'll ask that question here in a couple of minutes, but it's a simple yes or no. We, we continue to take personal inventory on a daily basis and continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. So it's implying that we are going to make mistakes. And if you look back on step 10, the wording on step 10 is continue to take personal inventory when we were wrong, promptly admit it. So there's a couple things there. When we are wrong, we promptly admit it, and we continue to set right any new mistakes as we go along. For those who want to take the 10th step, please stand, and I'll ask the question. Simply answer yes or no. Will you continue to take personal inventory and continue to set right any new mistakes as you go along? Okay, thank you. This concludes the session for steps 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Next week we'll do steps 11 and 12. I want to thank you for all being here and thank you for letting me help you tonight. Here I have a couple quotes out of the big book. I want to share some information describing a sharing partner. A sharing partner is an alcoholic who's recovered from alcoholism through the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous, has had a spiritual awakening, and is willing to help the new person through the 12 steps. Chapter 2. There is a solution. We of Alcoholics Anonymous know thousands of men and women who were once just as hopeless as Bill. Nearly all have recovered. They have solved the drink problem. We are average Americans. All sections of this country and many of its occupations are represented, as well as many political, economic, social, and religious backgrounds. We are people who normally would not mix. But there exists among us a fellowship, a friendliness, and an understanding which is indescribably wonderful. The ex-problem drinker who has found this solution, who is properly armed with facts about himself, can generally win the entire confidence of another alcoholic in a few hours. Until such an understanding is reached, little or nothing can be accomplished. That the man who was making the approach has had the same difficulty, that he obviously knows what he is talking about, that his whole deportment shouts at the new prospect that he is a man with a real answer, that he has no attitude of holier than thou, nothing whatever except the sincere desire to be helpful, that there are no fees to pay, no axes to grind, no people to please, no lectures to be endured, these are the conditions we have found most effective. Chapter 7 Working with Others Practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. It works when other activities fail. This is our twelfth suggestion. Carry this message to other alcoholics. You can help when no one else can. You can secure their confidence when others fail. Remember, they are very ill. Life will take on new meaning. 
to watch people recover, to see them help others, to watch loneliness vanish, to see a fellowship grow up about you, to have a host of friends, this is an experience you must not miss. We know you will not want to miss it. Frequent contact with newcomers and with each other is the bright spot of our lives. Beginner's Big Book Group provides sharing partners for those who want to take the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. Will the sharing partners who want to work with others please raise your hand? Thank you. I have one last quote from the big book. It comes from the chapter, A Vision for You. And then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. Abandon yourself to God as you understand God. Admit your faults to Him and to your fellows. Clear away the wreckage of your past. Give freely of what you find and join us. We shall be with you in the fellowship of the Spirit, and you will surely meet some of us as you trudge the road of happy destiny. May God bless you and keep you. Until then. In honor of our AA pioneers in the old tradition, we'll simply stand without holding hands and close this meeting with the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> 